Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today we're putting down the shiny new second generation Ryzen CPUs for a different kind of CPU comparison. During all the commotion last month, Intel quietly released the rest of the Intel Coffee Lake lineup, and this included five new Pentium processors, three of which are standard powered desktop models. Late last year, Intel announced new uh, gold and silver processors under the Pentium and Celeron lines. On the desktop, these were KB Lake parts with a refreshed name. Our standard Pentium CPUs are now known as Pentium Gold on the desktop. And since they started with the KB Lake generation, I suppose this means that the Pentium Gold CPUs all include hyperthreading. For those of you wondering, Pentium Silver is for Pentium chips found in mobile and low powered devices using the BGA mounting method. Why Intel found it necessary to further segment their already heavily segmented product lines, well, that's anyone's guess, but it just makes the already very confusing situation even more confusing for shoppers. Anyway, we now have the Coffee Lake Pentium Gold models, which includes the G5400, G5500, and G5600. These models will only work on the H310, B360, H370, and Z370 motherboards. The G5400 comes in at an MSRP of just $64 US, making it 15% cheaper than the G5500, while it can't be more than 2.5% slower. It's also 25% cheaper than the G5600, and can't be more than 5% percent slower, so the G5400 is clearly the best value part. That being the case, I've decided to pitch it against AMD's best value CPU, the Ryzen 3 2200G. The 2200G is considerably more expensive at $100 US, so at over 50% more expensive, you have to wonder if it's worth buying. Before that though, this video has been sponsored by Wix, the website building service that combines advanced technology with beautiful designs to create your perfect website. There are tons of professional solutions available through Wix's website building tools, and everything is customizable to ensure your website has a unique look that's only limited by your imagination. Wix's platform is designed for every type of website creator, whether you're a novice or a professional website builder, and they'll take care of all the heavy lifting, so you don't have to worry about things like reliable hosting, web security, mailboxes, or custom domains. And there are loads of features that you can add to your website design, including booking services, beautiful photo galleries, e-commerce platforms, and more. Seriously, I've played around with Wix's website designer, and in just a few minutes, a novice designer like me was able to create a stunning professional website, that's pretty impressive. If you're interested in building a website with Wix, head to wix.com forward slash go forward slash Harbor Unboxed to get started. Okay, so on paper, the Ryzen 3 processor has a few obvious advantages. Firstly, it's a true quad-core CPU, whereas the G5400 is a dual-core with hyper-threading for four threads. It has more cache and out of the box operates at a similar frequency. And I say out of the box because the 2200G is an unlocked CPU and therefore can be overclocked for even greater performance. It also supports higher frequency memory and perhaps the greatest advantage of all is the integrated GPU. Whereas the G5400 packs the pathetic HD graphics 610, the 2200G is armed with a far more impressive Vega 8 GPU. However, that's not going to be the focus of today's comparison, though I will briefly show performance before wrapping things up. For this comparison, I want to focus on CPU performance, so most of the gaming benchmarks will be conducted with a discrete graphics card. But rather than use the GTX 1050 or something even slower, I'm testing with a GTX 1070 to remove the GPU bottleneck while also remaining somewhat realistic. Remember, last generation's flagship GPUs are only equivalent to the current generation mid-range graphics cards, so unless you upgrade your CPU every time you buy a new graphics card, knowing how these CPUs perform when not GPU limited is very important, plus GPU limited testing is just pointless anyway. In addition to the GTX 1070, other testing notes worth mentioning include the following. The Pentium G5400 was tested on the MSI H310M Pro VD, and as the name suggests, this is an Intel H310 motherboard, one of the cheapest you can buy. Therefore, we have been forced to use the standard DDR4 2400 memory spec. Then for the Ryzen 3 2200G, that's been tested on the MSI B350 mortar using DDR4 3200 memory with the standard XMP loaded. Then for a second test configuration, I've upgraded the Wraith Stealth box cooler to the Deepcool Gamax 200T and overclocked all cores to 3.9 GHz. Okay, well I think that covers everything, let's get into the results. 
First up, we have the sustained memory bandwidth results, and here the Ryzen 3 2200G enjoys 26% more bandwidth. Both CPUs feature a dual channel memory controller, the main difference being that the 2200G is able to take advantage of DDR4 3200 memory, while the G5400 is limited to DDR4 2400 or anything but a Z370 motherboard. Here we see when running Cinebench R15 that the G5400 is 9% faster than the stock 2200G for single threaded workloads. However, because the 2200G is a true quad core, when it comes to multi-threaded performance, it's almost 50% faster. Then once we overclock the 2200G, it's now 2% faster for the single threaded test and a whopping 56% faster for the multi-threaded test. So a true showing of dominance for the Ryzen 3 processor in this benchmark. Next up, we're going to look at a few of the PC Mark 10 tests. In fact, we'll be looking at four of them, and the first one is the application startup performance. Here we can see that the G5400 and its punchy single thread performance does well in this test, and it's not until we overclock the 2200G that it pulls ahead. That said, stock the 2200G was just 5% slower, so it's not exactly a huge margin. The video conferencing test is a lot more demanding on the CPU, and here we see the stock 2200G outpacing the G5400 by a reasonably large 10% margin. Then, once overclocked, the 2200G is 15% faster, and that's a fairly commanding lead for the Ryzen 3 processor. The web browsing test isn't particularly core heavy, so this time the G5400 is able to hang in there with the 2200G, allowing both CPUs to deliver a similar score. Photo editing is a bit more taxing on the CPU, and this allows the stock 2200G to beat the Pentium processor by an 8% margin, and then a 15% margin once overclocked. So overall, AMD does do very well in these PC Mark 10 benchmarks. Moving on to the Blender test, and in this real-world application, we see an incredible 49% reduction in render time when moving from the Pentium G5400 to the 2200G. That's very much in line with what we saw when looking at the multi-threader performance with Cinebench R15. We do see less of a margin between these two CPUs in the V-Ray benchmark, but even so, the 2200G was still 33% faster and 37% faster once overclocked. The Pentium processor puts forth its best effort yet in a heavily multi-threaded test, as here it is just 24% slower than the 2200G when testing with Corona. That margin though was extended slightly to 28% once we overclock the 2200G. For compressing and decompressing archives, four Ryzen cores are better than two Intel cores with hyper-threading, by an almost 40% margin, which is very impressive. The 2200G also dominated the G5400 in our Excel test, completing the workload almost 30% faster. Okay, so time for some games, and in total I've tested nine titles, and we will start with Ashes of the Singularity, everyone's favourite synthetic gaming benchmark. This game heavily utilises the CPU, and here we see the 2200G offering 18% more performance than the G5400, and almost 30% more once overclocked. Those are some huge gains right there with the GTX 1070. Assassin's Creed Origins is a game that demands at least a quad-core, and ideally you really want a quad-core with SMT or HT support. The dual-core Pentium scrapes by with just 32 FPS for the 1% low result, and this meant the Ryzen CPU was 44% faster with 46 FPS. Overclocking led to bigger gains in this title, and here the 2200G was almost 70% faster than the G5400 once overclocked. Although we can only accurately benchmark the single player portion of Battlefield 1, we see that the 2200G is still being very well utilised as it delivered 34% more performance than the G5400 when comparing the 1% low results. That margin was blown out to 53% once the 2200G was overclocked. I should also note that the game ran noticeably smoother on the Ryzen 3 CPU. Counter-Strike Global Offensive isn't the kind of game I was expecting to really favour the Ryzen 3 CPU, but here we see the 2200G delivering 31% more frames on average, and 32% more once overclocked. Overclocking didn't really help much in this title, but even so, the 2200G was still significantly ahead of the G5400. Although the G5400 allowed for smooth gameplay in F1 2017, the Ryzen 3 2200G was still significantly faster, pushing the 1% low result 25% higher from 64 FPS to 80 FPS. Again, we see that CPU overclocking had very little impact in this title. Far Cry 5 is another game where overclocking the 2200G did a little for the Ryzen CPU. Still, despite that, it was over 30% faster than the G5400 when looking at the 1% low data. Here we see that performance in Overwatch was very solid using either CPU, but the 2200G was overall 45% faster when comparing the 1% low performance. 
Another title that saw both CPUs delivering solid performance was Rainbow Six Siege, but even so, the Ryzen 3 2200G continues its winning ways, delivering around 15-20% and more performance than the Pentium G5400. Although we can't accurately benchmark Vermintide 2 once things kick off, you can expect the 2200G to be at least 30% faster under heavy load, and if anything, that margin would only grow. So another solid win for AMD in our last gaming title tested. Before moving on to power consumption though, here's a quick look at integrated graphics performance. Basically, even at 720p, you're going to have a hard time playing anything on the Pentium G5400 without a discrete graphics card. Meanwhile, the 2200G is very respectable and when overclocked can beat an RX 550 in some titles. So if you're going to be making do without a graphics card for any period of time, then the Ryzen 3 2200G is a must. Okay, so now it's time to check out power consumption. And remember, the Pentium G5400 is a dual core, while the Ryzen 3 2200G is a quad core. So you can expect the faster, more powerful quad core to consume more power. Looking at the Far Cry 5 results, we see that that is indeed the case. Here, the 2200G pushed total system consumption 29% higher, but remember, it was 32% faster. So in terms of performance per watt, the Ryzen 3 CPU actually does better. The G5400 does come out on top this time though for efficiency and ashes of the singularity. Here the 2200G consumed 28% more power, but was only 18% faster. Not exactly a noteworthy margin, but it does make the Ryzen 3 CPU a little less efficient here. Finally, we have the Corona benchmark, and here the G5400 system consumed 43% less power, and here it was 32% slower. So again, slightly better efficiency from the Pentium CPU, but overall, still much slower. Okay, so we've now looked at plenty of benchmarks and it's pretty clear that the Ryzen 3 2200G wipes the floor with the Pentium G5400. But is it better value? Well, if you're planning on gaming without a discrete graphics card, then quite simply, yes. Uh, it's world's better value. Uh, simply no comparison to be made here. Gaming with the integrated GPU found in the G5400 is almost impossible and, well, at best, extremely limited. Uh, the 2200G, on the other hand, can mimic entry-level discrete GPU performance and is therefore workable. Assuming you plan on purchasing something like a GTX 1050, RX 560, or perhaps something more powerful like what we tested with, or you also want to use your budget bill to get into video editing or any other kind of productivity work, then which CPU should you get? Well, first let's factor in the platform costs. The MSI H310M Pro VD, which we use to support the Pentium G5400, costs roughly $52 US, and 8GB of DDR4-2400 memory will set you back about $75 US. Add those prices to the $64 US you can expect to pay for the Pentium G5400, and you've got a platform bill of $191 US, let's just say $190 US for a nice round figure. The Ryzen 3 2200G comes in at $100 US, and you can expect to pay about $70 US for a B350 board. The MSI B350 mortar that we used comes in at $90 US, but that's worlds better than the H310 board we used in terms of quality and features, so let's work with $70 here. Then for the DDR4-3200 memory, you'll want to allow for about $100 US for an 8GB kit. This then places the 2200G combo that we tested at around $270 US, and that makes it a little over 40% more costly than the Intel build. Of course, if you factor in the cost of a graphics card, such as the GTX 1050, then that margin does come down to just over 20%. I should note, you can also get away with slower memory when using the 2200G with a graphics card, and that will help reduce the overall costs further. In any case, without a graphics card, the 2200G, as I said earlier, is without question worth the price premium. A 40% increase from $190 US to $270 US is well worth the 250% increase in performance for games, and not to mention, you can actually play all the latest games. That said, if you're not interested in 3D performance, but you want to tackle heavy tasks like rendering and coding or whatever else, then the extra investment is well worth it, as the 2200G was often up to 40% faster. And don't try and tell me no one does those tasks on a quad-core CPU, because I know they do. So, in summary, the Pentium G5400 really only makes sense if you want a dirt cheap PC for web browsing, consuming media content, and firing off the odd email. Anything more than that, investing the extra $80 US in the Ryzen 3 2200G platform is going to net you significantly more performance and a much better upgrade path in the future. 
And that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate what we do here at Harbour Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. As always, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I will see you again next time.